In this video, we are going to be learning about each of the eight layers in ProPresenter 7 and how to use them. Hey, my name is James and I hope you're having a blessed day today. Thanks for joining me for part two in my ProPresenter Simplified Layers tutorial. Now let's jump right over into ProPresenter and get started. Okay, now that we're over in ProPresenter 7, Let's go ahead and get started on our first layer, and that is the screen color layer. Now, this layer is our base layer that sits underneath all the other stacked layers. And as the name implies, this is a layer that you can apply a screen color to your screens. Now, this does apply independently to every single output screen that you have. It is also important to know that this layer is tied specifically to your screen configuration. In the screen configuration is where you will turn the layer on and off and there are no other ways to manipulate this layer. What I mean by that is you cannot turn it on or off by looks nor can you clear it by one of your clear buttons. So naturally you're now asking yourself the question why exactly would I need to use this screen color layer? What is the point of it? And we're going to talk about that in just a minute. But first, before we do, let me show you how you can activate the screen color layer. That way, if you do decide that you need this layer, you'll know how to use it. To enable the screen color layer on one of your output screens, you simply need to go into the configure screens menu, which you can get to in three different ways. The first way is to click on pro presenter, click on preferences, go to the screens tab and then click configure screens. And the second way is going to be to click on screens, then go down here to configure screens. And the third and final way is to use the shortcut that you can see here, which is able to be rebound to another shortcut if you like, but that by default is going to be control alt one on a PC or command option one on a Mac. And now that we have the screen configuration window open, you'll find the option to turn on or off the layer right here in the upper right. It's simply a checkbox and also a picker to pick the color that you want to use. And also notice that each screen has its own setting, so you can do this independently for each screen. Now, if I go back to my side screen here, you'll notice that I have the screen color checkbox already checked and I have a green color selected. And so if we look up here into my multi view, you'll notice that you can see that green color on my side screens. This is because I currently have nothing being sent to that screen. And so because the screen color layer is the bottom layer and it is turned on, you are now seeing that in the output for that screen. Also, the last thing I want you to notice is if you turn this setting off, it's real time and it goes away immediately. So just keep that in mind that if you want to turn it on, you can do so immediately by clicking this box and it will immediately be turned on. Now that you know how to turn on the screen color layer, let's circle back around to our question. And that is what exactly would I want to use this layer for? There are multiple reasons why you might want to use the screen color layer, but there are a couple that are probably going to apply to most people. And the first one is simply that you want to send a screen color to one of your output screens that is the base layer of your output at all times. And there could be many reasons for this, but a simple example is say you have a screen that always has white text on it, maybe a scripture or some kind of message, and you always want that to be legible, so you always want a black background to be sent to that screen, you can enable the screen color layer, set it to black, and now it will always have that black color on it. Now you could still apply a media layer element, so you could put an image or something else on it, and that would of course cover up that screen color layer, but you would always have that black fallback if you had nothing on one of the other layers above it. The second reason that we're going to discuss is probably going to be the most commonly used reason for using the screen color layer. And that is to be able to utilize a system called chroma keying. Now, if you don't know what a chroma key is, that is also often referred to as a green screen. I don't want to go too in depth talking about green screen or chroma key in this video. I'm actually going to have to do a separate video specifically about that, but I do want you to have a basic understanding of what it is so that you could understand why it would be useful for this particular layer. Basically a chroma key is a process by which a specific color can be removed from an image. And this allows a portion of that image to be replaced by something else or rather the layer underneath it to come through. 
In layman terms, by the time your output from ProPresenter reaches its final output screen, the transparencies or the alpha channels are generally lost due to hardware limitations. Using a green screen or chroma key, you can in essence regenerate those transparencies, allowing you to overlay things on top of one another. There are a few other methods to do this same thing, but we're not going to talk about those here. And finally, I want to give an example of when this might be useful, and that is anytime you want to display text such as lyrics or scriptures over your iMag. Now, iMag is image magnification, which in more layman terms is just a live video feed shown to your audience that's the same thing as what they're already looking at. Now, this can be a different camera angle or zoomed in or zoomed out and so on. Most of these methods and examples will be brought up again at a later time in other videos, but for now, let's just summarize what we've learned about the screen color layer. This layer is specifically tied to your screen configuration. It can only be turned on or off, and it cannot be manipulated with looks or by any of the clear buttons. It is a persistent layer that will always be sent to your screen when it is enabled. Our next layer is the video input layer. Now, it is quite obvious what this layer is for based on the name, and this layer is used to bring video input into ProPresenter directly. Video input sources are most commonly going to be physical sources, such as a video camera, a webcam, or even your cell phone. Depending on the size of your church, you may not be bringing physical inputs directly into ProPresenter. Most big churches are bringing their camera feeds into other hardware rather than routing them through ProPresenter 7. If you are a smaller church that doesn't have all of this additional equipment like some of the larger churches, you can actually bring your video inputs directly into ProPresenter. You can bring in multiple cameras directly into ProPresenter, and then you can actually use ProPresenter as a switcher. Pretty cool, right? Unfortunately, we're not going to look at how exactly you can set up these video inputs in this video. I'll be doing a separate video directly related to video inputs and how to set them up at a later time. But before we do move on to the next layer, I did want to at least show you an example of how one of these video inputs could be utilized for one of your services. So if you look over on the right side of the screen here, you'll notice I do have a video input currently active. We know this because the button to clear the video input is lit up. You just cannot see the video input currently because my current looks are not sending this to any of my screens. And so I'm going to go up to my looks here and I'm going to change to this tutorial video input. And then you'll notice immediately the camera feed comes up right here on my side screen output. And just like that, we have a camera into ProPresenter as a video input. So let me show you one of the uses you might be doing uh, using your video input. And that's going to be a song, you know, your basic song. So I'm going to click on this song and I'll make this a little bit larger for you. And if I click on my first lyric slide, you'll notice that the lyrics are overlaid onto my video input in a lower third and just like that I can click through this and it's it's beautiful and this is exactly how most churches utilize this and it's all done directly in ProPresenter this is not requiring any kind of chroma key or green screening like we talked about before and that is because within ProPresenter all your transparencies are kept and it can output it just like it is in the program and like you see it in the window. So I'm going to go ahead and switch back here. Then we're going to go ahead and clear this video input. And I want to talk about one more thing. If for some reason you did not have your video inputs in ProPresenter, but rather your cameras were being fed into your switcher, this is the kind of output you would be outputting. And that is a green screen with your lyrics laid over that. And this is what we talked about before. So this output would be sent to my switcher and then this green would be keyed out and my camera feed would actually be underneath that. So we would get the same look we just saw, but it's done externally. It's not done in ProPresenter directly. Just like that, we're done with the video input layer and now we're ready to move on to the next layer. The next layer is one of the most commonly used layers, and that is the media layer. Now, this layer can be used for just that, media elements such as videos or graphics, and you can put all kinds of things on this layer and then display them to your output screens. 
throughout this entire video, you'll notice that this ProPresenter simplified image has been up here, and that's simply a background image that I created in Photoshop, and it's on the media layer. Now, one of the most important things that you need to understand about the media layer is that there are two behaviors that this media layer can have, and that is the background behavior and the foreground behavior. Let's jump on down here to one of my songs so I can talk a little bit more about this behavior. And I'm going to go to this song right here. This second slide is my motion background. And if you look in the top left corner right here, you'll see this icon. Now, if you don't know what the icon means, this gray box is considered the background. So if you see that in the front of this icon, that means it's set to a background behavior. And if you see the little mountains that are um, in the scenery here, in the front, then that would be a foreground. So right now this one is set to a background, which is our persistent behavior. So if I click on this right now, you'll notice that it comes up. And then if I click to the next slide, you'll notice that it persists, it stays there, and it will stay there until either another background element is clicked or until I clear it with one of my clear buttons, such as the media layer or clear all. Uh, for example, if I go down here, I can click through all of the song, it'll stay up. If I click on this next background image, you'll notice that it will change and that one will also persist and so on. So let me scroll back up here. Now, if I change this to a foreground element, then re-trigger it and now click off of it, you'll notice that it goes away immediately because it is non-persistent. This is pretty straightforward, although some people do get hung up on it because they don't quite understand the background and foreground and how things interact with each other, but it is actually pretty simple once you get the hang of it. Now, there is another weird quirk about this media layer and how it interacts with one of your other layers, and that is a layer that we're going to talk about next which is going to be the slide layer. So the slide layer, this layer is also pretty straightforward. It is generally going to be used for text items such as song lyrics or Bible scriptures and things of that nature but you can also put media onto this layer. It's a little bit confusing because it won't act the same way as media does on the media layer. You actually would convert that media into a slide element and then you lose that ability to set a background or foreground behavior. So it's important to understand that. In general, you wanna keep your media on the media layer, but there are some times when you need to display multiple pieces of media and you might have to utilize the media layer as well as the slide layer to get both of those things uh, displayed or maybe for one to go to one output screen and one to go to the other. We can discuss that also later, but for now, let's continue on with the slide layer and the three different elements that make up the slide layer. Starting from the bottom, you have your presentation background color. And then right above that, you have your slide background color. And then on top of that, you have your actual slide objects. This seems pretty trivial, but it's actually very important to understand because sometimes the way these layers interact, and I'm talking specifically about the slide layer and the media layer, there could be things happening that you did not expect, and you might get super confused and don't know what is going on and start pulling your hair out if you have any, unlike me, I don't have any, but if you do, you don't want to be pulling it out. My goal here is to help prevent you from that whole hair pulling out thing. So let me show you an example of this issue. That way you can hopefully avoid it. I'm going to hop over into this tutorials playlist and we're going to click this media background and foreground. And you can see here, I have a very basic, simple slide built right here. It has a motion background on the media layer set to a background. And then on the slide layer, I have some text as well as a little box. And if we click on that slide, you can see the expected behavior. We have our motion background, which is on the media layer. And then above that, we have our text, which is on the slide layer, including the little box. And that is working the way we would expect it to work. So now if I go back here and I edit this slide, 
and we're going to just give it a background color this time. So I'm going to go right here and click on background that gives it a color. And then if I click that, you'll now notice that you see that slide background color instead of the media. Now this is still the expected behavior because of those three elements that I mentioned that make up the slide layer. We have the presentation color and then we have the slide color and then we have the slide elements. So everything's still falling in the correct order. We have our media layer that is underneath this slide background color and then the slide object on top. So it's still working as expected even though I don't know why you would want to set a slide background color like this when you're wanting to show media, it doesn't quite make sense. But now let's take this just a little bit further and I'm going to show you where the quirkiness kind of begins. So if we go back over to our slide and we change this to a foreground instead of a background, you'll notice now that the background slide color has disappeared. And I don't know why that is. The background slide color is still there and it's still applied to the slide, but we're seeing our media again. And this really makes no sense to me. And I reached out to Renewed Vision and also other people in the community and nobody can quite tell me or explain why this change was made. To me, it makes no sense, but there must be some kind of reason why they did it. But I don't know what it is, so I apologize. If you know, please leave a comment down below and let me know and I will update or make another video, whatever I need to do. But for now, you just need to understand that if you have a media element set to a foreground, then any slide background color or presentation background color that you have, it is not going to be displayed. It is basically ignored as if it was not there. So now we're going to go ahead and jump back over into our main presentation. And I did want to mention one more thing about the slide background color and the presentation background color. And that is to let you know that those two are basically the same thing. One of them is just applied to the entire presentation and the other one is just applied to the slide. So if for some reason you had one particular slide that you wanted to be a different background color, you could actually set a presentation background color to say black and then you could have one or more slides set specifically to a slide background color of white and then as you're scrolling through the presentation the background color would be black until you hit those particular slides and then it would be white and so on. All right, guys, that brings us to one of everyone's favorite layers, and that is a new layer that was implemented in ProPresenter 7 and that is the announcements layer. This layer is a very powerful layer and a lot of churches should implement this if they do not already. Basically what this layer is, is it's a layer that can utilize a media and slide layer of its own, independent of the main media and slide layers, and you can send this to a particular screen all while still running your main outputs. So you can have the announcement layer running at all times, going to a specific screen, maybe out in the hallway or in another room in the building, and you can still click through your services. Now, why this is powerful is that you no longer have to have, say, a separate pro presenter running your announcements. That way you can run through your services or just running the announcements before and after service and not being able to run them during service. And it's just pretty awesome that you can do both at the same time. So let me give you a quick rundown of how you set this up. It's actually very simple. Take a look at my playlist over here and you'll notice I have this pre-service announcement loop presentation right here. That is these four announcement slides right here. And I'm going to go ahead and activate these like I would on a Sunday. And what we do is we click this slide right here, which begins our worship countdown. And this has a go to next, which automatically starts this announcement loop slideshow. You can see right here, this is set up as a slideshow. So I'm going to click that. Now notice that it jumped down and started that uh, presentation as well. And you'll notice that my timer here, which has a background media and then two slide elements, which is an animation and a timer, it's showing on my LED screen. And this announcement loop is showing on my side screens. But one thing I want you to notice here that's important is if you look right here, you can see this orange box. This indicates that this is the currently active or triggered slide. 
But look down here and you'll notice this new green box that's around these announcement slides. And that is the current active announcement layer slide. And these two are independent. So you can control these and these independently, but show both of them at the same time. So if I were to go down here, for instance, and click on one of these announcement slides here, you'll notice that my announcement loop is still running, but now these announcements or the one I've clicked rather is showing over here on my LED screen. So you can do this independently of each other. And a good reason that you might want to do this is so you can show these on a particular screen all the time. I might have a TV out in my hallway that I always want to show announcements on. I could make a presentation like this and send it via looks to a particular screen out in the hallway and it can run all the time and I can still run through my service as normal as long as all of the looks that I use are always sending that announcement layer to that particular screen. So let me go ahead and clear all of this. And let me show you how you can set up a presentation to be on the announcement layer. You can look over here at my announcement loop and you'll notice this little green target. This signifies that this presentation is on the announcement layer. To set that, you can either right click, go to destination and choose announcements right here, or you can go over here to this little target here and click it. And the same thing pops up. Notice that it also prompts you to edit your looks. That's because you need to make sure that you have an announcement layer checked for one of your screens as I do here. Before we move on to the next layer, I want to show you one more little thing about this. We use ours a little bit differently than sending our announcements to a particular screen at all times. So I'm going to reactivate this again. And what I want you to notice is we don't send this to a different screen outside of our sanctuary. These side screens and this LED screen are both in our sanctuary in front of our congregation. But right now you'll notice I am using this announcement layer. And the reason is because I want to show this media background and both of these slide elements on this countdown and be able to show this media layer announcement loop on a different screen. And that can be a little problematic with looks. So this just makes it easier for me to send one type of media to one screen and then multiple types to another without them interfering with each other. And that's simply done via the looks here on my announcement loop. And so that is the way we utilize the announcement layer. So it is really powerful and you can use it for its main intention, which is to send an announcement loop somewhere all the time. But you can also simply use it as an additional layer that you can use when you need to get multiple things to different screens at the same time. So let me go ahead and clear all of this and we are ready to move on to the next layer. And that is going to be the props layer. Now the props layer is a very unique layer in that it can be set up separately from your normal slides and it can be a persistent layer, meaning that you can turn on these layers and then kind of leave it on as you're going through your presentation or you can toggle it off at any time. You can also toggle multiple props at the same time and then clear certain ones or you can clear all of them at once. Some of the common uses for the props layer are things like lower third name badges or just lower thirds in general that you want to toggle on at specific times or also you can do things like your church's logo that you may want to stick up at a very particular time. Just all sorts of great uses for the prop layer. Now I want to show you just a few examples of ways that you can utilize the prop layer. Two of these things are going to be things that I actually do at my church. And so they are very useful to me and I think you'll find them useful as well. So the first one would be lower thirds nameplates or name badges. This is a very common thing on churches, especially when they are streaming. They want any speaker that comes onto the stage to be able to have a name displayed so people know who are speaking. So if I go down to my sermon here, and then this is how our sermon is typically laid out. We have a starting area here where the camera is on. And then when we go to this bumper, it blacks out our side screens here so that we don't have any camera showing during the video. And then we would end up on this particular slide here, which is where our preacher comes up and begins 
speaking. Now, once he starts speaking about the sermon, we generally will throw his name up. That way the live audience and also the online audience can see who's speaking. And of course, this is for guests that are in service, not our members who know who he is. But what you could simply do is click your prop here. You'll notice I have one titled Nathan. That is my pastor's name. And if I click that, you'll notice that it popped up right there. Let me make that big for you so that you can see it. And you'll notice the little nameplate in the bottom left there. And remember, this green screen is our chroma key that I've talked about earlier in the video. Typically, this would actually be our video feed behind this prop. And so you would actually see the preacher on the screen. And then you would see this lower thirds name badge and then you can simply just toggle that back off when you're done and it will go away now you can also toggle multiple props at the same time and then you can disable them one by one or click your clear all props up here and that will make them all go away a second way that my church utilizes the prop layer, and this one is pretty unique in my eye, is we actually use it to show a baptism video. And I did not mention before, but yes, you can put videos on a prop and you can display them on the prop layer just like you would any other graphics. What we do here is we show the baptism video that is made as a compilation of the baptisms from the opposite service the previous week. That way everyone in the congregation gets a way or a chance to see every baptism that we had. Not only the live ones from the current week, but the ones they missed from the opposite service the previous week. And we will show that during one of our worship songs. So let me show you how that works. I'm going to scroll down to this I believe. And if you notice right here, I have a label called baptism video. That's just to signify that that is where we want to display our baptism video for that week. And so what we will do is actually drag this prop over onto it and it'll create the little prop trigger right here. So as I'm going through my song, like I normally would, I keep going till I get down here. And when I go here, it's going to trigger that prop. Now I do want to show you one important thing before we do that and that is within this prop itself. So I'm gonna go right click and choose edit. Now you can see this media is actually right here and it's on the slide layer basically of the prop, but you can still edit this just like you could any other video. I can go into the inspector here and do all of the normal controls. And the main one I want to focus on right here is this playback stop. We wanna make sure that our video is not set to loop or it will keep playing forever unless you turn it off, but rather we want it to stop. And then the end behavior right here, notice I have it set to fade to clear. What that is, which is actually a new thing added in ProPresenter 7, is we're able to fade out the video or the slide or whatever it is to a transparent background. So any layer that's underneath the prop layer will then become visible again once this video is at the end and fades to clear. So let me show you exactly how that works. So let's go back over into the show. And remember, we were right here on this particular slide. And when I go over to this particular slide, it's going to trigger the prop. As you can see, the video did start right here on my LED screen. And I can continue to click through the song and my lower thirds will continue to pop up. And the lyrics are actually still underneath this props layer. Now watch this screen right now. You'll notice as it fades out, the lyrics will come right back up. And so just like that, we are shown the video and we are still in line where we were. We did not lose our place. And so we can finish out the song without any distractions or trying to hit any extra buttons. The only caveat to this is you'll notice this prop is still active. And so you would either need to manually click this off, even though it's not showing, you don't want any prop layers active for no reason. But the way we do that is we just add a clear all to our in song macro. So when I click here, the prop goes away, the prop is gone, and we are back to normal and good to go. And I did want to throw in just one other example, and that is some advanced lower thirds where you are showing slides during your sermon, and you may want to show a particular lower thirds on those specific slides. There are other ways to do this, but I just wanted to show you this example just so you can see how you can use the prop layer if you just think outside the box and think a little creatively. So let's go down to our sermon. 
you'll notice right here I have my first sermon slide and it is just a typical slide with a scripture, some little graphics, and this is for 1 Samuel 17, 45. And if you look over here at my props, you'll notice I have a prop called Sermon Slide 1, Lower Third, and this is basically the same slide information as this, but built out in a prop in Lower Thirds. So actually, when I click on this, it will automatically trigger this, just like our baptism video, and you could put this on every slide that has a graphic or even a scripture or whatever it is that you want to trigger. So if I click that, you'll notice the lower thirds came up here and you'll notice that the regular graphic is here. Let me just show you that a little bit larger. And so you can see how that works. And of course, you could trigger that multiple times in a row. You could add a prop on each of these if you had multiple of these uh, sermon slides. And that's just an easy way to do it. Just keep in mind, you would have to toggle the props off, but you could simply add a clear prop to each of your slides as well as a prop trigger for the appropriate one. And ProPresenter will always clear the prop before triggering a new one. So that will give you a nice way to do a main graphic and lower third with all of your announcement slides. So let me just go ahead and clear this and get us back to our default state. And now we are ready to move on to the next layer. Ladies and gentlemen, we are on the home stretch. Now we only have two more layers to go. If you stuck with me this long in this long and tedious tutorial, I really appreciate it. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to watch my content. Hopefully you are finding it helpful. And if you do like this content, please like and subscribe. That way I can reach more people and help them to serve their church and their God the way that I am serving mine and enjoy it the way that I do. Now let's go ahead and get down to the last two layers. The messages layer is very similar to the props layer. It can toggle on a message and then toggle off the message. And this can be done at any time, no matter where you're at in your service. In fact, this layer used to be on the same layer as the props layer, but renewed vision split them into individual layers. And so now you can trigger them independently or at the same time. The main difference is that the messages layer is intended to send a message directly to someone in the congregation or someone on stage such as a sick child message asking the parent to please come pick up their child because they are sick but you can also use this layer for other things such as a countdown or some kind of lower thirds and stuff like that the two examples that i'm going to show you are the two that i've already mentioned and that is going to be the sick child or a countdown that you might show on your announcements or something like that so your messages are located down here in your show controls just like your props and your timers and some of your other things and i just realized i have some timers running so i'm going to reset those and so on the messages here we have a sick child message created let me click edit down here so we can see what we've got and in a message you have a message detail section where you can type out what the message is going to be and then you can add what we call a token which is something that will then create a value box down here that you can change on the fly so if you look here i've got a child id token created and you can create any token simply by typing it here and pressing enter and then put it wherever you need to in the message and and now whenever you type a value down here, that value is basically a variable that will be shown in this particular spot here. So if I show this message, it will say, will the parents of child number one, two, three, four, five, please come to the mall area. At my church, we do not use the messages. We only use props, but this is how you would utilize it if you were going to use them. And to show that message, you would simply click show right there, or you could drag the message onto a slide directly, and that will create a trigger. And so I'm gonna go ahead and click show here. Let me go ahead and switch this over to the side screen so that you can see it a little better. And now you can see that message has popped up and it's also highlighted in orange, just like the props. I can click on this and click hide. That will make it go away. And if I click show again, it will come back. And just remember that this green is our chroma key. Normally in our church service, we would be showing the iMag or live camera feed. And then this message 
message would pop up over it for that person in the congregation to see. You can also clear the message from here, and you can also create macros that do that, as well as buttons on the Stream Deck and so on. The value of this is being able to create these pre-made messages with a variable that you can change. So if today a different child was sick, you simply would type in the new ID for that child and hit show, and now you get the same message, but with the updated ID. Pretty simple and pretty straightforward, but also can be very useful for you. Now let me change this back over to my multi view here and we'll move on to the next example. And that is going to be a countdown timer that we can show over any of our slides, but specifically I'm going to show you how to put it over your pre-roll announcement loop. So I'm going to go ahead and activate the pre-roll loop like we did earlier in this video. And you can see that my announcements have started running right here and my countdown timer is running here. Let me switch this to the side screens to make this a little bit easier to see. And so now we have my announcement loop running. And if I click down here to my service countdown announcements, you'll notice this message is built out the same way as the previous one. You can type whatever you like, but for the token on this one, we're actually going to click the drop down and go down to this pre-made one called timers. And we can pick any of our timers that we have created. So I've selected my early countdown timer for my early service. This little area down here will pop up and that will allow you to change the time, but that does not affect your actual timer over here. That's if in case you need to have a separate time that particular day for whatever reason you can do that here so now if you look up here at the side screen i'm going to click show down here and you'll notice that that timer has popped up now if you were paying attention you would have noticed that this slid in from the side that's simply a slide build-in animation that i have built on the theme here so if i go into this theme and then i click edit then I go over to the right one, this announcement countdown. If I select this, go to build, you'll notice I simply have a build out right here and it is, I'm sorry, a build in and it is a in push on both of the items. So they slide in from the left. Now I'm gonna do a different video on builds and animations at another time, but that's just a little cool thing you can do with your timer. And to make that go away, simply click hide and now it is gone. So one more time, if we click show, it slides in and now this can stay up until we disable it. Or you could also right here select after time expires for dismiss and when the timer is up, it would go away automatically. So that is it for our two examples and for the messages layer. Let's go ahead and go back up to the top here and reset everything and get ready for that final layer. And we are down to the final layer, the masks layer. Now this is the most unused layer in my opinion, and that's because its use case is very specific. Although there are some other things you can do with the layer, its main purpose is intended for environmental projection masking, which you may or may not know what that is. Environmental projection is when you use your surroundings or your environment for your screen for your projector rather than using actual screens. So just picture a Christmas show and you want to put snowflakes or falling snow kind of all around your stage, but not on the screens. You would use environmental projection and put that on the walls and so forth. Now you may have screens in your sanctuary as well, and you don't want those snowflakes and snow to be on those screens because those probably have lyrics or video of another kind. So what you would do is use environmental projection masking to actually mask out your screens. So now the projector is projecting around your screens and not onto the screen itself. So the intended purpose of the mask layer is actually to create custom size output screens for your projector. Of course, there are other ways that you can use the mask layer. Since the mask layer can actually contain media, such as images, text, and shapes, you could use it for many other ways, but just keep in mind, it cannot display videos, and also it cannot be cleared with your clear buttons like the other layers can. 
So if you wanted, you could put images on this layer and use it as an additional image layer to send multiple images to different screens. Now there is one weird way that we use the mask layer in my church, and it's not really very ideal. In fact, it's the wrong way to do what we're doing, but it works. And I do want to use this as an example to show you the right way to do it and the wrong way to do it using the mask layer. So let's hop over into this tutorials playlist and this video mask right here. And let me preface this by saying anytime we play a video during our services, it goes on to our LED screen, which is a center screen in our sanctuary. And then on the side screen right here, we normally have our iMag, which I talked about before. That's why you see this green screen popping up so much. Generally, that would actually be our camera feed. And when we play these videos, we don't want the camera feed to show up anymore because you have people on stage just looking up at the screen and that looks weird. So our switchers need something to go to and that is going to be a black screen so it just looks like the projectors are off. Now there's a way to do that directly in the switcher itself but we're not utilizing that. We're rather sending a black screen via Pro Presenter so that our switchers can switch to that and we just get the black screen. Before we look at these two slides, let me show you how you can create a mask. If you go to more mask editor, you get your typical slide editor here and you can create a mask. Now remember that you can only add text, shapes, and images, not video. And you can see here, I simply have a black rectangle. Now let me also go into the looks here and show you what it looks like here. I'm going on to my video look, you'll notice I have nothing showing for my side screens, but I have a mask applied here and it is the black screen, the same one that we were just looking at. So let me go back over here and now we're ready to look at these two different methods. So if I click on this right here, you'll notice the video of course comes up and you'll notice that the black comes up on my side screen and that is the desired output that we wanted to have. But one problem with this is you'll notice that I am ready to clear this now because my video is ended and my preacher is back up on stage. So I need to get my green screen back so that my camera can come back up. So I go over here and I clear this slide layer and nothing happened. Oh no, I cleared the background. Nothing happened. I'm still getting this black box. And that's because it's on the mask layer. And that layer, as I said before, cannot be cleared with clear buttons. So the only way that I can get this back is by triggering a different look. And that might be okay if you're triggering it on the next slide or whatever, but I'm just showing you this because it might throw you off. And again, it's not really the intended use of the mask layer, but I'm gonna show you now the proper way to do that next. If we click on this next version over here, you'll notice we get the exact same results here, the blacked out screen and the video. But notice this time, if I click the clear button, my green screen layer does come back up. And so my camera would come back up. And this is exactly what we would want as we're moving on from the video back into our next service element. Now, what we're talking about now is not really directly related to the mask layer, but this is gonna bring this video full circle and kind of reference some of the previous things we've talked about. And that's specifically going to be the slide layer in this example. So I'm gonna show you how this particular method works. So first, let me show you the looks for this particular slide. We're gonna go in here, go to edit looks, and go to this non-mask version of my video look. You'll notice there is no mask, but we have a presentation theme this time. And this is set to a black screen as well, but let me go into that and show you exactly what it is. Notice there are no elements in our objects window down here. This is actually simply a background color. So it's a slide background color of black. So if we go back into our look one more time right here, You'll notice that on the side screen, I'm simply sending this slide layer. 
which is the black slide background color that we just looked at. And then on my LED screen, I'm only sending the media, which is going to be the video in this instance. So you're asking yourself right now, why are you showing me this? What is the point? And the point is there's something that could go wrong here that would drive you bonkers and you would not be understanding what is happening. And it's related to something that I've already talked about before in the slides layer part of this video. Notice this first slide. The video is set to a foreground, but on this one, it's set to a background. So let's reset this one to a foreground because that's typically how you would have a video set as a foreground, not a background. And so if I click this now, you'll notice that my black slide color did not come up. I still have my green screen color. And so you may be confused and thinking, why did that happen? The slide layer is active. It should be sending. And this comes full circle back around to the slides layer section of this video. If you remember, I told you if you had a element set as a foreground, then the slide background color or presentation background color would be ignored and that is exactly what is happening here so even though in my looks i have the slide layer active and i do have a slide background color set it's actually being ignored as if it's not even there so we have to set this to a background in order for this to behave the way we want. And now when we click it, that slide layer, which is the slide background color, is being sent to these side screens and the video is being sent to our LED screens. And if we clear it, it clears the slide layer and that then shows our screen color and we get the intended behavior pretty crazy, but it works and it's the way we want it to be. We don't really need to utilize this weird mask layer method. All right, so we are wrapping things up. Finally, let's get back over into our main presentation here. Give yourself a pat on the back. We made it through all eight of these layers. It was a bit of a mess and kind of tedious, but hopefully this gave you a better understanding of how each of the layers work, when to use one and when not to, or at the very least opened your eyes to some questions that you may have. And if you do, please feel free to reach out to me in the comments below. I would be glad to talk to you one-on-one -on -one or in the comment section directly and answer any questions that I can. But I want to thank you again for joining me, giving up your time to watch my videos. I really, really appreciate it. I hope that you will give the video a like and subscribe if this video had any value for you. And I look forward to seeing you again on the next one. And for now, I want you to go out into the world and bless someone today. Thank you very much.